How's it going, Tiny Little Hot Dog Cuties? Ben here, and today we, and yes, I'm finally doing a weekly video. I don't know how long I can keep this up, honestly. But today, we are going to be talking about how I managed to grow, not necessarily a full beard, but a decent beard within my first year of testosterone. So this video is specifically for people who are interested on how it's like to medically transition as a trans man and or if you are a trans man thinking about starting hormone replacement therapy or if you are a trans man on hormone replacement therapy currently and thinking why can't I get my beard yet? So this video will talk about what kind of conditions you need to have to have an adequate full beard and some things that you can use to accelerate that process. So let's get started. So before I actually show you the products that I use to get this slightly luscious beard, uh, I just wanna tell you guys my experience um, of, of this beard growth process. So by the end of my first year of testosterone, I had a friend, um, he, was looking at me and he's a trans man he's almost two years on testosterone and his beard is about like my level of depth maybe a little bit more than my level of depth and he depth and he was like whoa ben like how did you manage to grow all that beard in less than a year because because most people most people take more than a year to get a full beard some people it takes up to five years to get a full full all all beard and in the beginning it's like patchy it's not it's not very good to look at so people keep shaving it which was what I was doing and then I started doing some research I asked my doctor about it uh, my NPs more specifically and she was like well actually for a full beard to grow out you kind of have to expect the same kind of duration that a cis man needs to have to have a full beard and that generally takes three to five years and I was like hold up I am not gonna wait that long I want my beard now because my brother is younger than me he's three years younger than me and he already has a full beard so I want a full, full beard so what can so I started looking up the ways that I can essentially accelerate the process of me having a nice nice full beard and I'm here to share it with you guys. So the first thing and the most important thing is kind of a genetic factor. So this is something that's going to be out of our control. And it's go I know I'm, I'm like fixing my hair while I'm making this video. Um, this is something that's going to be out of our control, but it has the biggest influence on beard growth as a trans man or even a cis man. And that's genetics. Like what did we inherit from our parents, from our grandparents, from our ancestors? that allow us to get a full beard. Now, I am very fortunate to have a very well-bearded family. My father has a full beard, my brother has a full beard, and I'm generally from the region of the world where men are known to have very thick and luscious beards. I'm from Southeast Asia, I'm Desi, and, you know, it's, it's, it's in our blood, <laughs> essentially, to grow, for men to grow a beard, so that's why I have the favorable genetics. There's other races and other ethnicities that allow people to have really full beards. And it's not just a race thing sometimes. Sometimes it's just a family thing. I know there are Asian men uh, from from the more Eastern Asian areas with really good thick beards. And they're generally not known to have very thick beards. But I've seen them because it runs in their family. So it really depends on family slash ethnic genetics of that allow you to have favoritism on whether or not you will have a really good thick luscious beard and unfortunately it's out of our hands if you look at your family photos and you see that your brother doesn't have a full beard and it's patchy and your dad doesn't have a full beard and it's patchy and they usually keep it trimmed or completely shaven off it probably means that you are not going to grow a thick luscious beard no matter what kind of products that you use so genetics is the number one factor unfortunately and the second thing I want to address is that if you're in no rush to grow out your beard as someone who is going to undergo transitioning medical transitioning if you are in no rush honestly just take the time let it let it run its course let it do its thing it's it's the most I guess natural way to grow your beard so if you want to do that go ahead and do that I there's no there's no shame in that honestly and I and I, I'm 23 and I wanted to just just get my 
the first year get my major changes out of the way as soon as possible because I am 23 and I missed out on so much in life because I wasn't able to transition earlier so this was just really important for me so I just got it out of the way so now we'll get down to the products and I'm gonna tell you guys about the pluses the minuses and why I switched products, why I changed products, and all that jazz. And if you followed me on Instagram and, and watched my stories in the last couple of weeks, you will realize that I did address some of these things on my Instagram story. So, I share a lot on my Instagram stories. This is an incentive for you to follow me on Instagram because I don't get the opportunity to make uh, robust videos that often because I'm a medical student. So, we'll get started as of right now. So the first thing that you can use, and this is the product that I use for the longest, is an over-the-counter drug called Minoxidil. And I'll show you, I'll show you the bottle that I use. I got this from Amazon, a six-month supply for like $25. It's incredibly affordable, incredibly, incredibly affordable. But there are some things about Minoxidil that you have to know. And before I talk about any of these products, I need to say this disclaimer because I don't want to get sued, is that I am only spreading general research and medical knowledge. I am not giving personal medical advice and I'm not giving medical advice, period. So if you think what I'm giving is medical advice, it's not and don't sue me. Thank you. All right, so minoxidil. This is an over-the-counter drug that was originally used to uh, treat uh, hypertension, which is high blood pressure. But then they realized that there was a side effect with this medication and the side effect was a favorable side effect and that was hair growth. Kind of like how Viagra was created, honestly. If you guys want to know that story in a separate video, I'm willing to share it. But minoxidil was originally a high blood pressure drug and they found out it caused hair growth for people who were taking it orally. So a bunch of really smart scientists or really shady pharmaceutical representatives or workers were like, hey, why don't we make a topical solution for this drug and apply it on hair and see whether or not that does anything. So they did a bunch of like clinical trials and did like used it on a lot of people and found out that it does indeed stimulate hair growth because hair hair follicles have specific stages that they go through. So they go from um baby hairs um, to permanent hairs. So from baby hairs to permanent hairs, there's a process. There's an antigen, telogen. I'm not going to go into too much detail. There's different phases that hairs go to to become mature, thick hairs. Before that, they're called vellus hairs, which are baby hairs that are very soft. And usually you can't see them very well because of how soft they are. And they tend to fall off and then mature hairs grow over that or they mature into it. Um, and mature hairs develop from that. So, then Minoxidil started being branded as Rogaine. And if you haven't heard of Rogaine, a lot of it's generally marketed towards men who are experiencing male pattern baldness. And they apply Rogaine to their hair twice a day. And it stimulates hair growth for balding men. But a lot of really smart people on YouTube and social media decided, hey, my beard isn't growing fast enough, what if I put it on my face? And they found out that it does stimulate beard hair as well. So, there's a huge, I believe, Facebook community, a huge community on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, um, that um, documents their beard growth a journey through using minoxidil. However, minoxidil is not a miracle drug. It's not going to give you immediate results. It's going to take at least six, to, six months to a year to get satisfactory results and up to two years to get complete results. And I would use this for six months and I got tremendous, tremendous results. Like before I, w I put on minoxidil, I was on testosterone for six months and all I had was this sad excuse of a mustache. I used minoxidil for six months and I had beard growth all the way here and all the way here. So very, very, very impressive. However, I had to stop using minoxidil. There are a couple reasons why. 
one, I'm taking out care of my fiance's beautiful, beautiful cat, and um, minoxidil is extremely toxic to cats, unfortunately. So if you are taking thinking about taking minoxidil, but you live in a household with a cat, I would seriously, seriously reconsider or think about it because of the fact that it is so toxic to cats that cats can die. Cats can die with minimal exposure to minoxidil. So this bottle, this bottle is empty, fellas. All there, the, the, all that's in it is the shampoo that I use, and I use it as kind of like a travel carrier, my shampoo. And that's all I use this bottle for. It's Minoxidil is out of my household. There are other uh, uh, side effects that you should be aware of and should completely stop using Minoxidil if you are experiencing them, such as lethargy, um, you start experiencing hair growth at, in unwanted areas, or a third one is that it can cause chest pains. And these chest pains can actually become really serious because people who are taking oral minoxidil, there was a really, really small, rare chance of uh, developing something called pericarditis, which is fluid accumulation outside of the heart, within the lining of the heart, which can become deadly if it's not treated. So if you do start experiencing chest pains or you don't want to ever get near any that those side effects, even though it's rare, I would avoid minoxidil. I personally didn't have any of those bad side effects. I didn't even experience fatigue or tiredness, but maybe it's because my body is well adjusted to this drug. Every person is different, but the sole reason why I stopped using it is because one, I'm taking care of a cat. I love cats. They, I treat them like family, so I can't, I can't hurt cats. And two, I wanted to avoid the side effect, even though it's very rare, of pericarditis. So those are the caveats of minoxidil, but this is proven. This is proven um, to stimulate hair growth for balding men. There's not a lot of research done on beard growth, but there's been so many anecdotal evidence of beard growth that honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did a research and found out that it stimulates beard growth. One more thing I wanna address before I get to the other products is that all of these things work concurrently with testosterone usage. So if you are a non-binary person or trans man wanting to masculinize your body, you can't achieve these results that I have had through using these products without testosterone. Testosterone is going to get set you that point and these products are just gonna slightly elevate you from that point. So testosterone is a major drug working here to stimulate beard growth, unfortunately. So if you do use these products without using testosterone, you might get slight hair growth, but it's going to be a very minimal. I've seen some people use it uh, before they were pretty and they did grow a beard, but all of it was vellus hairs, which are baby hairs. So they were soft and not thick, luscious beards. So just a caveat that testosterone is the major drug at play here when it comes to hair growth. These things are just supplemental. So the next thing I wanted to address was, okay, um, what do I do now? I can't use minoxidil because I have a cat in the home and I still wanna keep having really good beard growth. So I started looking at products and I was knocking things off. Like I couldn't use biotin because biotin, thickens your hairs, like reinforces your hairs, but it doesn't necessarily stimulate growth. But you can have some favorable effects with biotin, but I wanted something that stimulated growth. I wanted to fill, like I had up to here done with minoxidil up to here, I wanted to come in and biotin wasn't gonna do that. Um, only testosterone would and it would take forever. So I started looking at research like, um, not just anecdotal research, research that's been done at universities, research that's been done by researchers. And I came across a really good blend of what to do. So it's a combination of anecdotal and medically backed research. The one product that I have seen that has done equivalent to minoxidil and probably even higher results than minoxidil is peppermint oil. And I have a container right here. This is the container of peppermint oil. I'm gonna bring it right here. I'm gonna zoom it in in like a B-roll, but like peppermint oil is the product. And here is the research behind it. So a bunch of scientists got together and did research on mice or rats, some kind of 
rat looking animal. I am not familiar with whether it was mice or rats, but they did it on rats. So there's a caveat. They did not test this on humans, but they decided to test rats with uh, just regular jojoba oil, peppermint oil, and minoxidil. And the peppermint oil was a 5% solution. So this is a 100% solution that I bought. So I do dilute it and I'll show you how what I dilute it with. And they diluted their peppermint oil with, uh, I believe, castor or jojoba oil, but some kind of uh, average carrier oil that we, that you would use when you mix essential oils together. So they used it on the mice for four weeks and they found that, this is incredible, uh, I will link you guys down to the research article below so you guys can check it out, um, but they found that peppermint oil did as well as minoxidil if not better in some cases. Even though it wasn't performed on humans, mice are generally a really good, a really good uh, interpretation of what can what kind of results you can expect on humans so I was really convinced that peppermint oil was going to work and in addition to that instead of using a regular castor oil or a regular jojoba oil as a carrier I decided to buy Jamaican black castor oil now this is really known for anecdotally because there's not a lot of research on it this one is anecdotally known for creating thicker hair, thicker hair and stimulating thick, thick hair growth. So even though you are you have few a few hairs, your hair is going to look really, really thick. So I decided to use this in addition to like general anecdotal evidence of this working. A lot of men who were using minoxidil would use this as a um, substitute with the minoxidil usage because one other side effect that I forgot to mention with minoxidil is that minoxidil because it's suspended in alcohol dries out your skin like crazy I swear I had dandruff beard for months and it made me super super self-conscious like incredibly self-conscious so I'm so glad about switching to this oil base 100% um, oil base instead of an alcohol base because my skin was drying out like crazy. But another thing you can use is that minoxidil, there's a more expensive version, which is the foam. And I have heard that the foam causes less dryness and it tends to evaporate quicker. So you won't have that dryness with an alcohol based um, solution, but it's gonna cost you more, unfortunately. This, however, the jojoba and peppermint oil solution, tends to cost me, so the jojoba oil is two, around 200 milliliters that I bought. You can use any brand that you want and the peppermint oil as well. Just make sure it's 100% concentrated without any, you know, nasty bitty stuff that they put so they can drive up the prices and drive up the volume. Just look for reputable brands, but uh, this is about 200, 237 milliliters. And I've been using this for about eight-ish months and they're still a little bit inside and this peppermint oil was around twenty dollars as well this is a hundred and eighteen milliliters this will last me for years like years on end because the solution I make is a five percent solution similar to a five percent solution of minoxidil I don't know if they translate well with one another but in the research they used 3% minoxidil and 3% peppermint oil and they found out that the peppermint oil made got better results. So because I'm using 5% minoxidil I just made a 5% solution. So what I do is I have a container to hold the oil in like this one right here. and. I put in 95 milliliters of Jamaican black castor oil and 5 milliliters of peppermint oil. And I make this beautiful solution. Um, the Jamaican black castor oil tends to be extremely, ex extremely thick. This, because I add the peppermint oil, tends to be a, a lot better consistency. It also smells really good. It's, it's actually a really, really, really good... Um, solution to make. It's really easy to make. I feel like a scientist. I feel like I'm back in organic chemistry <laughs> uh, when I when I make this solution. But it's really easy to do and this this will last me at least at least four to six months. 
and I apply it twice a day just like minoxidil and honestly I've been getting pretty good results my hairs are coming in from the sides it definitely has improved I don't know how much of it is just testosterone and how much of it is the solution but I have better peace of mind using this solution than using the minoxidil with a cat in the home and now that I'm going to interact with the cat for a lot of my time so there you guys have it like those are the products that I have used and I've gotten successful results with I highly highly recommend it one side effect that I will mention is that this guy because there's peppermint oil in it peppermint oil is a derivative uh, is der menthol is derived from peppermint oil it causes a bit of um, Vicks Vaporub feeling or in your face when you apply it for about 30 30 ish minutes so I apply, apply it to my eyebrows and I apply it to my beard and I get that Vic, Vicks Vaporub feeling for a solid 30 minutes to an hour not a big deal honestly especially because when I was using Minoxidil this thing made my face itch incredibly incredibly so uh, there's just so many pros with this there are there are, is a pro with minoxidil in that it has proven to work for hundreds of people and it's they have done clinical trials on humans with so i do get the appeal of minoxidil but uh for me a natural low cost solution that doesn't have many adverse side effects i would rather take that so there you guys have it. That's how I was able to grow almost a full luscious beard in my first year of testosterone. I'm going to be continuing to use this until my beard goes completely in and then I'm going to switch to a regular beard oil. I might still keep using this solution for the rest of my life, honestly, because as you age, you know, hair thins and you start losing hairs. So I might just continue using that for the rest of my life in addition to a regular beard oil. If you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe. To, with your peers and follow me on Instagram and Twitter the links I have posted before in this video and I'll see you guys on the next one this is Ben